Welcome to Inquiring Minds. I am your host, Steve Harper. With me, as always, is the amazing, illustrious Donna Carlin. Donna, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm always amazed at the adjectives that you use. Unbelievable. Well, I have a Looking limited vocabulary, but I try to I try to use the big words for you. I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> well, so I am excited about today's topic. What are we chatting about today on Inquiring Minds? So, you know, with the new year and everything, I was thinking it would be good to decide what kind of life you actually want and say no to everything else that does not contribute to it. Ooh. Not easy. Not easy, no. I mean, you're talking, you know, uh, a whole lot of potential life changes, right? Relationships might have to change. Uh, you know, the, the people you go to for your feedback and, and input might need to change. You might need to separate yourself from opinionated family members who tell you why whatever you're wanting to do won't work. Uh, and, and in some instances, maybe it's wholesale career changes, right? You know, and, and uh, you might be, you know, needing to separate from where you are right now to do something completely different. So um, what brought this up to, uh, for you in, in your mind as to, as to why this topic is, is uh, you know, a good one to, to start thinking about? You know, I, every year I look at what my intentions are for the new year. And intentions are great. People set goals. I'm not going to go to New Year's resolutions yeah. because yeah. they rarely pan out. Uh, intentions are more immediate because intentions equal results. And we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, but what are we intending? What is it that we're doing? You know, mm -hmm. um, are we setting boundaries that honor us and keeping them and honoring those boundaries as well? Um, what, what are we allowing ourselves to dream? And are we going after that? We spoke about that yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, there are so much that's saying, it starts with what you say no to. Yes. And we accept so much, excuse the expression, crap in our lives because, you know, people will say it takes too much energy to deal with that. I'll just let it go. And then you start beating yourself up. Yeah. You know, yeah. I see people who um, are upset and angry uh, about, you know, what other people told them to do when they went and did it. Why didn't you say no to it? It's your life. Right. It's your choice. Say no to it so that you can embrace something else. And I think we need to consciously talk about that. Yeah. You know, no, I, what I do we want? Great. Yep. And what are we attracting to ourselves? Because if we're attracting everything we don't want, because we don't know how to say no, we don't know it's an issue. Yeah. Um, can you, um, you froze up just a little bit right there. You, um, the part right after you said, um, you know, focus on what we don't want. If you could carry that forward and I'll fix that in editing. I think we focus on what we don't want. Um, yeah. and we don't say what we do want. That's the yeah. first thing. The yeah. second thing is if we accept all the stuff that we don't want into our lives, cause we don't set those boundaries and we don't say no to them then there's no space for anything else. And then we live through regret. We live through anger. We are upset with people because we didn't say no to them. Um, you know, I think we really need to pay attention to what we say yes to. Yeah. And it, it I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because I think we have a default mode of trying to be people pleasers with everybody else, whether that is, you know, like you said, um, being sucked into activities that we might not otherwise want to be doing, uh, spending time, energy and effort on things that, you know, are important to other people, but maybe not important to us. And also we have this tendency to just kind of follow blindly like sheep that, well, this is just the way we do it because we try to avoid conflict. We try to avoid, you know, we just talked about risk, you know, on a, a prior episode and we try to, you know, avoid those things that, you know, could could be risky to upsetting the apple cart to a certain degree. And we, we give up our voice and we give up our power in what is really important to us right now in our life and what we really want to accomplish. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think a lot of people don't take the time to actually take that inventory and really understand 
what is it that I really do want to accomplish? What do I want to uh, do with my life or my career or my relationships? And uh, rather than defaulting to that automatic, you know, sort of knee jerk reaction to ask, you know, your spouse or your significant other or your best friend or maybe your, you know, colleague, what, it, what do you think, you know, don't do that is what you're saying. At the end of the day, you have to get very clear and, and, and very uh, uh, confident in what you want to accomplish before you, you know, necessarily go out and just, well, what, you know, you, you're, you're allowing yourself to be swayed by the opinions of others or the thought process of other people. And I, I think it's really important because I don't think a lot of people actually take the time to do that because we've just been cultured now, generation after generation to sort of look for that feedback, look for that approval or that rejection and allow that to sort of guide our what we do or what we don't do. And it goes to something even deeper. It goes to, do you want to lead a calm, nurturing life? <laughs> In which case, what are you, sub, you know, submitting yourself to when it comes to uh, the environments you put yourself in? Do, yeah. you, do you protect alone time? Do you protect your health and your well-being by, by, you know, not answering emails at 11 o'clock at night, things like that. Um, it's what kind of life do you want to be living? You know, it's, it's more than just what you say at work or, or the feedback that you get. It's what do you want to protect that is super important to you? You know, one thing that, that I will protect is my family time mm -hmm. because there's nothing more important than family. And I used to, I mean, this is almost a joke as an aside, but just to show you a, a simple example, um, I used to, now I'm not traveling, I'm not getting on a plane every other week, but I used to literally plan my travel around hockey games because we had season tickets and there's no way we'd miss a hockey game. You yeah. know me and hockey. Yeah. Um, and it was perfectly easy to, unless there was a, an issue or a crisis to actually plan my travel around my hockey games and don't ask if my plane was delayed because I was not a happy camper, but um, <laughs> it was important to me to be at the hockey games with Ray, because that is something yep. we share together that we absolutely love. And I protected it. It's the same thing with, you know, our Thursday night um, Chinese food meals with um, our dear friends. It's virtual now, but we still do it. We protected that we, you know, when at all possible, did not plan anything on Thursday nights. And if we did, we told them well ahead of time. So Thursday became Friday, whatever, you know, <laughs> tonight it's actually Wednesday, Thursday night. But, um, you know, you, you look at that and we didn't want to miss the time though. We didn't want to sure. miss that, that time with our friends. And th that is something that we tend not to pay attention to, but that contributes to the life that you want to have. Yeah. Those yeah. small things that, you know, prioritization and, and, and really, you know, getting clear about what's important to you, I think is a real critical factor. Right. And, you know, I just happened to listen to an audio book that was talking about uh, Sarah Blakely, the inventor of Spanx. And they were talking about in her first year of operation, she was still working uh, full time for another company. But she was developing this concept of uh, a new type of, you know, women's clothing, right? Underclothing. And uh, she had uh, come up with the idea for Spanx by uh, she was having to attend a Christmas party and it just didn't feel right, didn't fit right. She cut the feet off of her pantyhose and adjusted it and did it in a way that uh, she was like, you know, this is this is something, right? This is a good idea. And uh, she was kind of surprised nobody had thought of it, but she is being interviewed in this, this book. And she said, I didn't share it with a single person for the first year until I actually got enough money to get the production line going and, and a product out. <clears throat> and the, you know, the, the gentleman that was interviewing her asked, you know, well, why is that? You know, why did you do that? Because there would be so many people that would tell me it won't work. That's a dumb idea. Uh, if it was such a great idea, sweetie, that somebody else would have thought of it, right? You know, but, you know, and, and she said all good intentioned people, right? At the end of the day, they were all very, you know, they're very important individuals to her, but she recognized if it was ever going to go and it was ever going to be successful and she was ever going to have the confidence to make it go, 
she needed to not make it a, you know publicly available to her her personal and professional network until it was already too far down the road to to fail and she said that was one of it was an important lesson she shares that with a lot of entrepreneurs because it is important that you know whether it's a new idea a new concept it's you know a you know maybe a new uh, program that you're 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 entering in for your personal or professional development there will always be somebody who will tell you that it won't work and oftentimes it's the people that are closest to us that who who think they're being the most supportive and helpful and they're being anything but but they don't see it in the moment and so that that really stuck out to me which when we had this conversation you know have you know had this as our topic for conversation today uh, was really top of mind for me because, you know, she just sold her company for over a billion dollars. <laughs> it's, you know, it seems to be good advice that worked out. That's right. That's exactly right. And sticking to your guns, sticking to what you know is what you want is, um, is not so easy in a very competitive world. And um, to be able to trust that somebody's giving you the right advice I always say to people, go to people for advice who have succeeded in an area that blew you away. Yep, Don't go yep. to people for advice who've never started a business, who've never done anything in the entrepreneurial world, because yep. they're going to be risk adverse. And we talked about risks previously. Yep. Um, they'll be risk adverse. They're, they're going to be worried for you rather than support you. And it's most of the, most of the time it's coming from a really good place. It's coming from their heart. If they've not experienced what you're going into, yeah. then why in the world would you ask them for advice? Yeah. So surround yourself with people who want to see you succeed. Tell the rest to take a hike politely. You don't have to you know, <laughs> be rude or anything. And literally ask yourself, am I contributing to the life that I want? Is this decision something my future self will ask me, will thank me for? All these questions that you could ask yourself to help steer you in the right direction. Yep. Well, I asked that question when you asked me to do this show. Like, am I going to be a year from now? Am I going to be happy I did it? And I would say the answer is a resounding yes. So I'm glad I didn't go to my friends and family and say, should I do yet another podcast? <laughs> because, you know, uh, you know, I think people are sick of hearing from me. <laughs> you know? and they they no. probably would have told me that, right? No, at the end of the day, you know, those that advice is golden, you know, that you just gave. And it's so true. And what a great barometer to hold, hold up against in terms of uh, anything that you're looking to do uh, personally or professionally, any kind of level of improvement in your life. Well, so this is, you know, another great, fascinating topic for people to carry forward and maybe, you know, put on the table for their teams, their organizations, individuals that you're looking for that, you know, opportunity to have a deeper, more meaningful conversation. Inquiring Minds shows up every week to try and provide the content for you to do just that. So Donna, how can everybody get involved with the community that we've got growing? How can they find out more information about you and, and the work that you're doing as well as, is, uh, you know, maybe just sharing some ideas or topics they'd like us to cover for a future episode? So before I go into that, I'm going to also invite um, people in relationships to sit with their significant other or their families and ask that question. Ah. Yeah. to decide what kind of life you want collectively and uh, is what you're doing getting you there. It's a great conversation to have. That is. Um, you could get us on our website. Steve could be found at ripplecentral.com. I'm at Donna Carlin with a K.com. And you know what? You could get um, us through email, through our websites, all our social media. And if you want to join our community on Facebook, it's growing, which is so nice to see. Yeah. Um, it's Inquiring Minds with Donna Carlin and Steve Harper. Come join in the conversation. Let us know what you want us to talk about if you have an idea. And tell us how what we shared impacted you in some way. Yes, that's great. Yes, we definitely appreciate it. We invite you to, to participate there. We are paying attention. We're watching. And we would love to hear what you took away from this episode or any of our other episodes. And if you're new to the show, uh, we have a whole lot of episodes that we've recorded uh, in season one. Uh, great topics that we we went through as we were sort of feeling our way through uh, the development of this show. And we're super excited to be, you know, in season two now. And uh, but there's some great content and there's some great conversations in the, uh, the, you know, the weeks and months ahead. So 
we invite you to come along on this journey with us. Donna, thanks so much for another amazing conversation with Inquiring Minds. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.